worth hearing. We must be conscious of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. It's a kind of Christian consciousness. We must relate with that anointing. We must enjoy it. There are too many Christians that don't care about the anointing. But I tell you something. There's nothing you will ever do for God that will be accepted by Him that's not sanctified of the Holy Ghost. No matter how religious you are and how respected you are, you know, you can be so highly placed in a religious order and people respect you for what they call integrity. You know some people, they want to be known and respected by men. Now no matter how you have that, without the anointing of the Holy Ghost, it's empty. Doesn't mean anything. And your works will, will pass away with you. But Jesus said, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. He's concerned about works that remain. Hallelujah. I measure our spirituality, our faith, and the move of the Holy Ghost in our lives with what's written in the Holy Scriptures. It shouldn't be short of it. We're talking about a man who died 2,000 years ago and we're claiming he's alive. If he's alive, there must be proof. What do you think? <laughs> there ought to be proof. Glory to God. There should be proof. When you study the Bible, you see a lot of beautiful sayings. Hallelujah. Do you love the anointing of the Holy Ghost? Some people don't understand how to free themselves in the anointing. They think God loves their religion, which they have sought to protect all their lives. Let me read something to you. You're ready with me now. First Corinthians. Oh, ho, 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 glory. First Corinthians. Ha, ha, glory. Some of you haven't laughed for a long time. <laughs> You know, there are some people, they are so concerned, concerned about their problems and they're talking to God, oh God, this tumor in my body, I've been praying about it for the last six months, when are you going to do something about it? And they don't realize that God doesn't have any business dealing with their tumors. So they're there looking sad and unhappy. And then you say, hey, why don't you give the Lord praise? And they say, yeah, I'm ready to give him praise if he will perform this miracle for me. Some others, you say, hey, come on. Why don't you just rejoice, laugh, and praise God? They say, laugh? If you know what is in my heart, you wouldn't tell me to laugh. <laughs> Laughter is medicine. <laughs> it's medicine in the kingdom of God. You've got to learn how to use it. People who don't laugh always have a lot of sickness in their homes. <laughs> Laughing people hardly ever get sick. So now you say, well... Now you say, well... I'm not that kind of person... I'm not talking about being jovial... That's not what I'm talking about. 
I'm not talking about being funny. I'm talking about something that's more spiritual than having to sit in front of masquerade on television. I'm not saying that they make you laugh or uh, Frank Spencer, etc. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm dealing with reality. Glory to God. All right. So, 1 Corinthians chapter number 14. I want to read to you verse from verse 1. Follow after charity, love that is, and desire spiritual gifts. But rather that you may prophesy, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. Even when they don't understand, the Bible says in the Spirit you're speaking mysteries. Mysteries. You're speaking mysteries. But he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification, excitation, and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. Now, the word edify means to build. It also means to make bold. He said, he that speaks in an unknown tongue emboldens himself. If you were timid about something or frightful or fearful or afraid of something, the reaction, God's prescribed response for the child of God is not to run away. He says, embolden yourself. How? I, now, this is one of the reasons I want you to keep watching our teaching programs on television and getting the tapes and getting the books. You know why? They tell you the how. How? Because anybody can tell you to grow, but we tell you how to grow. Anybody can tell you to study the Bible, but we tell you how to study the Bible. You see, anybody can tell you what to do, but we tell you how to do what to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, and that's very, very important. See? Very, very important. Now he says, if you're afraid, you see, somebody can say, don't be afraid. Yes, but what am I supposed to do when fear attacks me? What do I do? He says, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue emboldens himself. <laughs> That's how to get bold. Because you see, the Bible says we do not have the spirit of fear or cowardice. Or timidity, but a spirit of love, of power, and a sound man is a spirit of love. Love dominates. But not only love, the spirit of power, ability. So I say, Yeah, I know I got the spirit in me. I know. I have the spirit of love, of power, of a sound mind. But here, I'm facing a situation and fear is attacking me. What do I do? He that speaketh in an unknown tongue emboldens himself. He says, when you speak in other tongues, your spirit is so charged that your spirit takes over your mind. Whereas there was fear in your mind, your spirit now rises like a giant from within you. Such that the outward man is no longer dominating, but the inward man shows up. And the thoughts of fear are relegated to the background. And thoughts of power come alive in you. That's why in 2 Timothy in chapter number 1 verse 6, Paul said to Timothy, 
Stay up the gift of God that is in you. Now, there are two things I want you to observe. When you read it from the fifth verse, he begins to talk about Timothy's grandmother and mother and how that they had the spirit of faith. And so Paul said, I know that you also have this faith in you. Then he said, that's the reason I want you to stay up this, the, the gift of God that is in you. See, you got faith. But he's saying faith is not enough. You have faith and that's beautiful. He's saying that's using authority. That's faith. It's working. He says, but there's something more. The dynamic ability, inherent power, and energy. Do you understand? Something that actually performs a walking power. You understand? So he said, I put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God that is in you by the putting on of my hands. He said, you remember I laid hands on you and you received the Holy Ghost. He said, stir up the power of the Holy Ghost that is in you. Stir it up. You see, you can have the Holy Ghost and never stay up the Holy Ghost power that's in you. And so what's going to happen in your life? You can be intimidated by circumstances of life. You can become afraid. Anything can happen to you. Why? Because the power of the Holy Ghost is right inside your spirit, far away in the holiest of all that is the most holy place your spirit but you know outside the most holy place is the holy place which is your soul and beyond that is the outer courts which is your body and most of the attacks that we get are either against our bodies or our souls but if your if the anointing of the Holy Ghost only remains in your spirit, which is the most holy place, you can be attacked in your body. You can be attacked in your soul. And you will not respond. So he says, stay up the gift of God. When you stay it up, it will permeate the outer, the holy place. And then the outer court. In other words, it will permeate your soul. It, that means it will get into your mind, your emotions, your will. Glory to God. And then move beyond that to your body. Until the anointing is so much in your body. Hallelujah. That's the reason for staring up the gift of God that is in you. So before you go out and hit the streets. Stay up what you've got. When you do that inside. You wouldn't need to have to do that outside. You know some people, when they face trouble, that's when they want to pray. When trouble strikes, then it's in the name of Jesus. Hey, in the name. Nothing happens. And then they become afraid. They become afraid. But that's not what God wants for us. That's not what He wants. He wants us to be bold, to get ourselves stirred up and on fire ever before we hit the streets. We have to get ourselves ready. So by the time we come out, the anointing is already... Remember, I told you last night, the anointing was communicated to the handkerchiefs. And then somebody took that handkerchief, traveled with it. Nothing happened to the handkerchief. Nothing happened to the person who handled it. The handkerchief had no intelligence. But it was taken... To where it was needed. As soon as it hits the situation, there was a response by the anointing. So when you get yourself stirred up and the anointing goes all over you, now you can calm down, get dressed, keep a smile on, and hit the street. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When they see you, they don't know what's in there. Boy, you are loaded. Hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah. We're hearing. We must be conscious.